Jay McFarland rounds out the four candidates seeking the party nomination. Jay, great to have you with us. Thanks for being on the show. Oh, so glad to be here. Thanks for having me. You bet. Let's start off with your background and qualifications. What do you believe it is that you have done that qualifies you to represent the uh, people of Utah's 4th Congressional District? Well, great question. I've actually spent the last 20 years on the radio talking to uh, citizens of this great state and telling them my ideas, my solutions, what I think should happen, and getting their feedback. I actually got into talk radio because I wanted to be involved in the public debate. So I've been debating with the lawmakers and with the politicians. I know how they think, and I've also been able to come up with great solutions along the way that are tried and tested with the people of Utah. So I really think that gives me an edge over some of the other people in the race. Yeah, yeah those watching may know you better as Jay Mac from yes. your uh, radio days, but yes. you also know, Jay, that through your time covering politicians, that it can be frustrating in Washington, D.C., and hard to get things done that you want to go there to do. So how can you as one person go there and get the things you want to accomplish? Washington, as you know, is basically shut down. Congress is at a stalemate. And I think they're at a stalemate because we continue to send representatives that are extreme to the right or extreme to the left, and they're unwilling to talk to each other. That's not me. I've learned how to articulate conservative ideals in a way that makes people think. And so I'm able to change hearts and minds, whereas today's politicians, it seems like they don't want to change anybody's mind. They just want to hurl insults at each other. And whoever lands the best zinger, I guess somehow they're the winner. That's not how I roll. I know how to articulate every belief that I have. And the most common thing that I hear after I talk about an issue is, you know what? I never thought of it that way. So bringing the ability to articulate a clear message and change hearts and minds, I think will be my greatest strength in Washington. What do you see as the most pressing issues the people of the 4th Congressional District will be facing over the next two years? Well, I'll tell you one of the things that drives me and drove me to get off the radio is this national debt. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to go to Washington. And then COVID-19 hit. And so COVID-19 rises above the national debt. How we will recover from COVID-19, what personal liberties we are willing to give up to stay out of a pandemic, and how will we pay back this national debt and do we need to invest more? I think we're looking easily at a two-year recovery, Glenn, and I think that's going to be the number one focus for District 4, and I think it's going to be the number one focus for the entire country. This is not going to be a quick recovery. I just don't believe that. Do you believe that uh, freedom and liberty were uh, stamped on in this uh, or stomped on in this process? I think it's a difficult situation. The Constitution clearly says you have a right to assemble. It clearly says you have freedom of religion. And then here comes a state government or a federal government saying you can't do those things. I've chosen to look at this as a way to help my fellow Americans. So I put on a mask when I'm in public, not thinking about the, the public liberty, but thinking about my neighbor. I mean, the Constitution is not meant to be a death sentence. We don't allow somebody to yell fire in a crowded movie theater, even though you have a right to free speech. So this is an intricate balance that our politicians have. They're literally balancing lives with livelihoods. And we have to join with them and cooperate with them to find the quickest way back. Let's get more into that. What is the quickest way back, keeping both of those things in mind, balancing both public health with economic health? The CARES Act was a good start from Congress, investing in the American people and investing in workers. I personally believe that we need to do more, maybe one step more, to keep these businesses from going out from under going out of business. Uh, one of the first things we did is we started announcing what restaurants, local restaurants, are suffering, and we encourage people to go to those restaurants. I think it's going to be a group team effort, but I also think everything looks different for the next half a year. Mm -hmm. If we're going back to church, we're social distancing. If we're going to 
a campaign rally. I mean, I didn't think this is what our campaigns were going to look like. I'm campaigning for my living room right now. So campaigns will look different. Gatherings will look different. And I hope that people voluntarily comply so that we don't have a second wave. And honestly, that's my biggest concern. Yeah. Will we have a second wave? Because businesses are already struggling surviving wave one. If there's a, a second wave, I don't think they make it. Yeah, there's no way any of us could have seen what was coming once all these races started. There's no doubt about that. All right, have Absolutely. a few seconds left. What is your pitch to Republican voters? Why should they go with you on June 30th? Well, I believe that I'm the best representative for District 4. I'm a moderate conservative. I am able to converse with the other side. I think if you look at my other opponents, they're just going to go back to Washington. They're going to continue the name calling, the personal insults, and that's not going to move the needle. We need to send people who can communicate with each other, who can recognize the wants and needs of the other side, and who can meld those things together. All right, Jay, we're going to have to end on that note. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. And thank